Definitely, we'll start off from Kenya. It is a, it's been a busy day, a busy week in our political landscape and the courts as well. It's we getting busier. Getting busier, actually, from yeah. what we are seeing. And Brian Odinga, the NASA presidential candidate yesterday, also had a press briefing and alluded to the same thing that Agnes Zani is talking about. Your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think, uh, just like she said, for them to come out and make that kind of claim, it means they have substantial information regarding that. But again, of course, you know, given uh, the case which was, um, you know, discarded yesterday, uh, it's not like NASA is a guardian of the truth. Mm -hmm. They collected a couple of newspaper cuttings and presented as evidence, which was, of course, discarded. So, yeah. But again, the claim they're making is, of course, justified. They have to find out what's going on. They're concerned, of course, as the opposition, and they're going to an election with a sitting president. So they have to make sure it's a, a fair Playground. But over, over the time, we've seen that uh, NASA making press briefing after press briefing, and every press briefing means an allegation after an allegation. And um, the argument that we've gotten from the other side is that they're just afraid of elections. They know they're going to lose. Now, of course, that is, it's always an opposition tactic to always make claims against a sitting government mm -hmm. so as to scare them, of course, as they face an election. All I have to do is to caution us against making some allegations which can lead to chaos, mm -hmm. tension which, of course, can lead to bloodshed, like we had in 2007. But I'm thinking this kind of, you know, sentiment has a basis in reality and they have maybe information, and uh, it's upon the government to make sure it's not done. The military is not supposed to be used in places where there are no chaos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at that uh, court ruling that was made yesterday, the printing of ballot papers, and uh, according to the IABC, it has started after that particular court case. They said, we've started uh, printing ballot papers for the presidency. That was expected. Last time I had a conversation with Betty and I said it, the appeal was going to, to go through uh, because uh, the high court decision was, of course, <clears throat> going to create a constitutional crisis mm -hmm. because the constitution is very clear about the dates when we need to hold uh, elections. So if the allocation was to be upheld, then it means a new tendering process had to be, uh, you know, started. Mm -hmm. So as to make sure now we have maybe some kind of public participation which could have pushed the election date to something else. And you see now you cannot hold an election on a date that has not been given by the Constitution. There's some conversation I was having with a lawyer here in the morning, um, in, in the afternoon, Eddie Orinda, who says that the major concern, even the way the courts are making their decisions, is in respect to the dates and the timelines that we have to beat for August 8th. Mm -hmm. But um, the application of the law suffers in the event, like we are seeing, as he says, that we are making rulings in respect of we are running out of time. Uh, well, again, uh, I think um, the weight of evidence which was presented was not enough mm -hmm. to actually lead to the upholding of the nullif nullification. You realize NASA made allegations. And of course, some fake news media printed those allegations mm -hmm. as the gospel truth. Now, the cuttings from the newspapers were presented to court as evidence. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's so a It looked like they were using their own allegations as that is evidence it, yeah. in court? So yeah, I think we have a problem with the kind of media we have around. Of course, I'm not blaming 100% of our media mm -hmm. houses, whereby we don't just take our politicians to task. I can make an allegation and you know, it's printed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, let me give an example of what happened a few days ago in the United States whereby the New York Times got a very nice story about Donald Trump Jr. meeting some Russian lawyer. Yeah. And uh, you know that the story was 100% correct. When they said they're going to publish it, the, the guy came out and said, okay, it happened. He, you know, he shared the information. So that is what we need to, to have here. Before mm -hmm. you go to publish your story, make sure it's credible, it's mm -hmm. true. So just because it's been said by a politician, it don't rush. Doesn't mean it's a gospel truth. Exactly. So the case, I think, is okay. I mean, the decision was okay. It allows us to conduct an election at the stipulated time. So it's, a, it's now upon IBC to make sure they're ready for the election, and it has to be credible, free, and fair, so as to satisfy both parties, yeah. Kenyans, but NASA. But can you, can you really satisfy everyone? We not Especially asking. when you're an election referee like the IABC. Yeah, we are not asking for 100% perfection. Mm -hmm. No election is going to be 100% uh, smooth but we don't want to see some glaring anomalies that can lead to chaos. Let's look at today's ruling. With all these court cases that the IABC has had to um, run with and uh, deal with, and they have termed them as a stumbling block in them, uh, ensuring that they deliver a free and fair um, election on August 8th, do you think they're right on track? Do you think, are you confident that they are prepared? I'm giving it, I think, around 90% confidence levels, mm -hmm. and uh, IBC, I think, has been doing a nice job, given 
the kind of tad, you know, political atmosphere we are around here, it's very toxic. So I have confidence they're going to be able to deliver a free and fair election. And I'm going to request the guys from both sides, the government and the opposition, to create an atmosphere of, you know, free and fair operations by the IBC. Because mm -hmm. if you begin pointing fingers at the referee, it means, you know, the fans will not accept the mm -hmm. kind of decision the referee will, will make. Mm -hmm. So the leaders have a responsibility to actually instill confidence, inspire confidence uh, on um, IBC on by IBC. Kenyans. All right, let's cross borders, head into the U.S. Uh, President Donald Trump marked six months in office. Yes, and it's been uh, a wild it kind has, of It has, it uh, has. I don't think uh, the, the, the world has been treated to anything, a presidency like that. Yeah, that is a, yeah, he's been able to put up a very nice show. You know, he's a showman. Yes, he Yes, is. and uh, it's been, I think, uh, it's been tough for him at 72 years old. I think he's, he's handling it so well. And um, going forward, like we said earlier, uh, I think at some point there's going to be what we call a critical mass mm -hmm. of guys, uh, you know, Republicans and Democrats calling for impeachment. Of course, you know, the articles have been uh, filed mm -hmm. by two Democrats. So it will gain momentum, and I think at some point Trump will be impeached. What are the things you think he's gotten right since he got in? Of course, there's a lot of controversy surrounding this man, but what are some of the things you think that Donald Trump has gotten right in his six months in office? I think his response to Syria, when there was a chemical attack on Syrians, was good. Mm -hmm. He didn't uh, dilly dally, just went ahead and dealt with it very quickly. It was, he was quite decisive. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, after some uh, uh, Navy SEAL was killed, uh, when I think you made some speech, yeah. the, it was well received. Uh, I think apart from that, it's been mess after mess after mess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Trump was not supposed to be elected president. Like I've always said, <laughs> it's an accident of history. <laughs> yeah, and what we've seen is a shrinking U.S., mm -hmm. which is bad for the world. Yeah, because, you know, we've always upheld and looked at the U.S. as mm -hmm. the moral mm -hmm. lead of the world. So what's happening is as the U.S. recedes or pulls back, the Russians and the Chinese are coming in. And of course, you know what Russia and China stands for. They stand for as, a, as a superpowers. Last time China came to Southern Sudan, they collected oil mm. as the Southern, Southern Sudanese guys were killing each other. They don't care. Yeah. The Russians, of course, you can see what they're doing. They get into some country, they mess up an election, they don't care the outcome. Mm. So as the US pulls back under Trump, that is what is going to happen. The Chinese and the Russians now will have a, a fair, a free, playground to do. So what, what are we saying? The at? U.S. could be in a very bad place in the next few years if Donald Trump keeps up what he's doing? Now, in six months, I think the U.S. has lost its glow as a superpower. Mm -hmm. So I think I cannot imagine what's going to happen in four years. It will be devastating, mm -hmm. not just for the U.S., but for the world. Well, speaking of six months uh, for Donald Trump, he got a major blow on uh, trying to repeal the Obamacare. Republicans seem to not agree with him on this one. Yeah, of course, the number of guys who shifted and, of course, led to the collapse is very small. I'm, I think I'm around four. Mm -hmm. uh, that is not enough because whatever they were able to come up, uh, to come up with is very, very bad. It takes uh, coverage from millions of Americans who are covered under Obamacare. So I could have expected more of them to actually come out and say what we have is bad mm -hmm. for our citizens. But again, I think it's good that... The, way, the ones who came out were able yeah. to do that. But it's, it's, it's a start. What does this mean for him that... Uh, people from his own side would come out and say, no, we cannot support this because it's going to affect millions of people. Yes, and uh, of course, I actually expected more guys to come out yeah. because Obamacare covered around 22 million Americans who were in, uh, originally, you know, without insurance, health care uh, cover. But um, what you'd expect that now that we have a new law, which of course is going, going to strip care from them, more Republicans could come out and say, no, we don't want this. Let's take time and work on something else. Mm -hmm. And again, um, I think Obama had a very noble intention as a president yeah. in extending health care or health insurance to Americans. So that's why it's going to be very, very hard to repeal it. These guys are being malicious. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is to talk about making it better. You know, Democrats have come out and said, we're not saying it's 100% perfect. What we can do is sit down as Republicans and Democrats mm -hmm. and perfect it. Yeah. These guys are not willing to listen. And you see now they have the leadership of a very, very bad president. Okay. Yeah. Let's come back to the country. The campaign trail. We are heading into the home stretch now. And uh, the bare knuckles all over. Last week we saw President... It was the beginning of this week, actually. Yes. We saw President Uhuru Kenyatta at the coast taking on the coast point men for NASA. 
Yeah, that is expected. And of course, um, I think um, devolution created smaller presidents mm -hmm. in the county. Smaller gods, quote unquote. <laughs> yes. And I think they've had a, a serious misunderstanding of their, the, the limits of their powers. You, I, you saw it with the Zoho, of course, and then there was Nanok from Trukana and all mm -hmm. that. I think they've been able to show disrespect for the president. And uh, of course, Uru is a very, very moderated guy. And most of the time, he's been able to hold it back. But once in a while, you know, he goes out and mm -hmm. says, I'm the president. So, and of course, because it's a campaign season, he has to go out and tell them, hey, what we've been able to do as a national government yeah. should not be confused with what you guys have done. And then there's another mistake the uh, governors make because most of them have been very, very corrupt. And of course, we've seen reports in the media like Ikidera has been, you know, summoned so many mm -hmm. times to the Senate for theft of count money. The president has access to information. And some of these guys confront him not knowing he's been able to see how they've been swindling money mm -hmm. that is meant for citizens. Mm -hmm. So you can stand before the president and say, Ah, the, the national government is very corrupt. And yet the president knows you've How stolen much, so much yeah. money. So that is the kind of hypocrisy, I think, which annoys him a lot. And sometimes he has to just lose it. But when he's the president, we do not expect that a president would uh, go in front of masses and say that in the next term we'll prosecute a uh, person A, B, C, D because of A, B, C, D. I mean, we had the first four years. Why didn't we see such things happen? Uh, I think Uru has been very presidential, so to say. I think he's been able to let those guys have their space and do their things, but what he's been able to get you back mean is have their space and yes, <laughs> and all uh, funds in the counties. Now he expected, of course, these guys to be responsible. Devolution is a new experiment in Kenya, and uh, because they've not been able to show responsibility, of course, when it comes to finances, all they've been doing is to pretend to be clean while pointing fingers. So he feels like now, okay, let's get elected then we'll show you what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. As you accuse us of theft and embezzlement and all that, we'll also do what? Expose you. Then we go to court. Yeah. So, so what do you think about the campaigns? Uh, as I mentioned, we're getting into the home stretch. They're trying to cover as much ground as uh, they can. On the 24th, we expect a presidential mm. debate, but we're still... Not sure. Because, not because sure. of the kind of uh, uh, thing hap that happened during the running meets debate. Well, the campaign has been okay, of course, apart from what we had in Kisumu sometimes back in Cabernet, mm -hmm. and it was just a ripple effect. Something happened in Kisumu, and of course, guys who were watching said, okay, what you did is not okay, and we're going to pay back in kind. So, and uh, that is what we need to stop. People like uh, Kajuang, who came out and said, you know, the president's welcome here, but the deputy president, no. Not. It set the pace for that kind of uh, embarrassing mm -hmm. uh, display from guys in uh, Kisumu. So people like Kajuang should stop that. And I expect the guys who are in charge of uh, monitoring campaign rhetoric to deal with him accordingly so as to avoid chaos. It's going to be a very closely contested mm -hmm. election, and we have to be very, very careful. About the debate, of course, incumbents do not benefit from that kind of debate. Mm -hmm. If Ruto could have showed up, I don't think he would have gained anything. He's known. He's able to travel, travel <coughs> around and access citizens and campaign. Mm -hmm. So it benefits newcomers. Mm -hmm. And of course, Raila is a known person. Uru is very much known. If Raila and um, Uru are to appear and have a debate, obviously it's going to be a Uru victory because mm -hmm. when it comes to close conversations, the yeah. president is more controlled and I'd say presidential. Yeah. So if it's a debate, I'd advise Raila to avoid. <laughs> yeah, Raila is good at really mobilization awesome. and that, it's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure the president's going to be very excited to have that kind of... Last time he won the, the debate in 2013, mm -hmm. yeah, he knows how to do that. We call it close combat. Mm -hmm. He knows how to do that. So you think that Raila Odinga would actually lose out if... In a debate, he yeah, he did. shouldn't. If I were Raila, if I was his presidential... I mean, mm -hmm. a you would advise advice, against it? Against it. Abel, we'll see how that goes on the 24th. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Always a pleasure having you here on Wolvi. Abel Oyeyo, uh, always here trying to, as we... Take a look at some of the things uh, that have been making headlines throughout the week. Let's take a look at another story. Gargantuan Hill climbs bullet descent.